Hello friends and welcome to another Pauper League. Today we're going to be playing Hexproof aka Bogles. It's a, uh, a deck that most of us have seen. Um, if maybe we've played Modern before. This deck was uh, popular for a little while. But uh, basically we've got a set of creatures that cannot be targeted by the opponent. And we are going to target them ourselves with a bunch of uh, auras that are going to boost power and toughness give trample and we're just going to slam into the opponent with these giant creatures that's the whole plan um some interesting cards in the sideboard i've seen people using uh, free wind falcon quite a bit which is pretty cool a good way to circumvent Kark clan shaman and cannonade uh, we've also got standard bearer for the mirror match uh gut shot pretty cool way to answer fairies and uh lifelink gives us uh some game against burn Finally, Young Wolf uh, for any decks running um, sacrifice effects, so we can just sacrifice half a Young Wolf instead of sacrificing a uh, important hexproof creature. All right, let's uh, get into the magic. Two lands. We have a creature, Ethereal Armor to get going. This hand looks amazing. Let's keep it. Good luck. They're going to need it. You got 32nd place with Goblin's Combo? Congratulations. That's excellent. Because, like, I, I heard that was a huge tournament, right? There were hundreds of people there, if I recall correctly. That's pretty great that Popper is getting that kind of... Uh, Attention. I'm going to play the Ethereal Armor first because if they have a Force Spike, I would rather the Ethereal Armor resolved rather than the Utopia Sprawl. Goes and gets another island. So with their playing snow-covered islands, I'm assuming there is it. All right, so they have counterspell. I mean, Bogles is a great option. Similar to Burn, you have a very straightforward game plan, and you're just going to play to your plan almost, you know, like, regardless of what the opponent's doing. I think, I think it's always a pretty solid option. Hey, Greedy. Um, interesting question. Um... So, I have seen Thunderous Wrath coming out uh, recently in some burn decks. Personally, I think that uh, you're, you're just better off playing the classic cards. Uh, lesson I learned a while ago, just, like, don't try to be cute. Um, there's generally a reason for the established cards in a deck. But uh, I am going to be trying Burn with uh, Curse of the Pierced Heart removed in order to play um, Voldaren Epicure. Yeah, very nice top deck with Ancestral Mass. Now we just have to get it to resolve. Oh, wow. Didn't expect the Rancor to resolve. I figured there for sure Spellstar Sprite was coming. Now we can land this Ancestral Mask. We should be able to uh, get a W here. Reveals another Plains. So maybe this is uh, that new Azorius Fairies deck. Oh, that's not fair. Maybe it's just Azorius Familiars.
Okay, so can they put together a loop uh, with ephemerate so that I never get combat again? That's probably their win. They're lying towards winning. Okay, so they are familiars. It's just kind of a weird start. And also, you don't generally see too many counter spells out of familiars. Uh, more likely, they're going to play something like Prohibit. They did have the Ephemerate, so two turns of no combat. Another Sunscape Familiar, Muldrifter, uh, for the Evoke cost, just to try and find that uh, Archaeomancer here. They're just digging for Archaeomancer. Two cards on the bottom, that's a really good sign. Yeah, Dignitary, this... I hate Dignitary so much. Just absolutely hate this card. Locks me down. I don't get to do anything. I just want some combat. I got a 41-39 first strike trample creature here that I would like to kill you with. Yeah, they didn't find it. Okay, so lucky. Oof. Are any of these cards here going to help us? Just wondering about Standard Bearer. Like, it's not going to do anything for Ephemerate or whatever, because that only targets creatures you control. Yeah. Don't have Essence Harvest. Or um, Harsh Sustenance or whatever. I guess, what is it? Harsh Sustenance is equal to the creatures you control, I think. And Essence Harvest is equal to the greatest power in creatures you control. Uh, life loss to the opponent. I think that's the way that works. Because, yeah, Heart Sustenance was a card that you would play in Elves. Okay. Wish we had some way to interact with their graveyard. Maybe a little bit of uh, removal, you know. Kill that Rhino if it comes down. But nope, I think we're just going to resubmit with the exact same deck. Hand looks amazing. We'll keep. And our opponent is on the mulligan. I think there was another card that um, saw a little bit of play in Elves. Uh, it was strictly a black card. And it, uh, whereas Harsh Sustenance targeted... Um, I think this one was, like, only two opponents. I seem to remember a, uh, a prisoner, like, cowering in a cage or whatever. What do you think of the Familiar's deck that splashes black for Dinrova Horror? I think that's a great way to end the game, honestly, just because, like, Dinrova Horror is so strong that you can use that to, like, 
clock your opponent. Um, you finally have a win con that ends the game quickly. So I appreciate that. As someone who spent a bit of time losing to, uh, to familiars. I like it when they speed that process up. But uh, Dinro of a Horror has been a card that uh, Tron has used to quite a bit of success. Alright, so they're holding up uh, Prohibit here. Abundant Growth on my Forest. They're going to let that one resolve. Then we're going to play Cartouche. Maybe they'll counter this one. Oh, they let that one resolve. Okay, I think we're just going to go with Commune of the Spirits then. And try and keep this other Ethereal Armor. Get some good damage in next turn. Maybe we shouldn't even play it into the counter magic at all, but I kind of like taking the counter magic out of their hand. I think it's tricky, you know, like we had enough mana for next turn to like easily play this into this. But I don't know. We could have tried to, you know, like, waste their mana, keep the Prohibit in hand, then they got to hold their mana up, hold Prohibit up again. Meanwhile, they aren't dealing with the board, but um, I think this is fine. You're going to snap the token. That works. Oh, wow. Wow. They could potentially play the Rhino here. Okay, it's a Mole Drifter Evoked. And Ephemerate the Mole Drifter for maximum card draw. Looks like it. Alright, so we're going to put the other Ethereal Armor onto this Bogle so we can attack with both. A little bit worse if we draw something that says Trample. We do not. Not quite a lethal attack. So they don't bother to block at all. This way they can ephemerate the Mole Drifter. Although it does mean that now I have two lethal attackers. But they have drawn a ton of cards. They got nine cards in hand here. Versus my zero cards in hand. So I think they really just need to start with a Rhino. I um, If they don't have Rhino... Oh, this is a really good one. Dombrier Cleric, get rid of Ethereal Armor. Yeah, that's a really good line. And if they have Ephemerate, they can continue to use this to get rid of my auras. Okay, counterspelled. Guess we'll just attack with a Glade Cover Scout. Hopefully they don't have an Ephemerate. Did 
Damn. Um, that's brutal. Yep. I was wondering how they could beat us. That That's how they do it. Dawnbringer Cleric Ephemerate. I think I'm actually getting pretty close to the scoop zone. They're going to be able to uh, gain control of the game from here. They have eight cards in hand. Um, with our none, they, all they need to do is just deal with one card a turn. And with the card advantage and selection that they have, it should be pretty easy. Hey, Blah Bear. Armadillo Cloak. Let's give it a shot. Oh no. Meanwhile, the opponent's like, oh yeah. I think uh, if they get an Archaeomancer at any point, I'm going to scoop. I think until they show that, I should probably keep playing this out. Might be able to make something happen, but I think that uh, we're probably going to a game three. And if we were just really looking to get through our leagues as quickly as possible, then uh, would have conceded this game. It's one of the tricks, one of the uh, problems, rather, playing against familiars, figuring out when you're supposed to concede. Um, I also, against familiars, it's like, this is one of the decks that I will try to time out. So there is also that consideration, although considering, you know, like how long the, uh, the first game took, again, I don't think it's really worthwhile to uh, try and go for a timeout. Oh, hey there, Greedy. Um, MTG Goldfish has been having some uh, troubles labeling Affinity. I don't exactly know why they're uh, having that problem, but Affinity is kind of changing into a Grixis control deck, if we're honest. Um, we are seeing a lot more counter spells in Affinity nowadays. It's got a counter dust to dust, exactly. This has first strike, but anything can block it. If we put the mask on the ledge walker, only the mold drifters can block it. Negate. Um, not too many really. Uh, commune with the spirits, I think, is the newest card here. No downgrades. Hey, islands. But um, I do intend on playing a league with Burn after the uh, league with Bogles. And in that case, um, we we're playing Swift Spear, of course. Uh, I also ended up taking out Curse of the Pure Start so that I could play Voldar and Epicure. So it is going to be a slightly different Burn list from the, uh, the last time. Where last time I had taken out Epicure and left in the Curse of the Pure Start.
Opponent sure loves drawing cards. Can't blame him. I was having a lot of fun drawing cards the other day when I was playing the uh, Is It Curve. Okay. So they have the Archaeomancer. Set up the loop. We're done at this point. Like I said, we could continue to play out, um, to play for the clock. That is absolutely reasonable, but um, just not into that right now with uh, with Bogles. Rather go a little bit, uh, a little bit faster than that. Yeah, that's fair. Um, Thermo does tend to die quite a bit. On the other hand, when you untap with it, it's just the best. Oh, no kidding. Hey there, Griffin. Can be hard to uh, keep things straight sometimes. It's so easy to, you know, like change your name, make a new account, what have you. For me, it's fairly simple. My name is the same across many accounts, but uh, not Twitter. Wasn't able to get Cooper the Red on Twitter, unfortunately. Still a little bit salty about that. Ooh, not a good draw. I figured, like, I could um, make an account, you know, Cooper the Red MTG. I'm just not, uh, just not that fussed. I don't really care that much about Twitter. So they have Counterspell Magic up, but do they have Counterspell or Prohibit? Let's find out. Oh, it's Negate. Unfortunate. Oh well. Is what it is. We kept a land heavy hand and we've drawn some lands. Hey, so it really depends, Rick, on our draws. Um, we have Armadillo Cloak and we have uh, in the sideboard... Um, lifelink. So if we find those things, we're going to do very well. If we don't find those things, we're going to lose. I mean, I guess we could potentially race them, but yeah. Generally, if you can find your, uh, your life gain, you're okay. Hey there, Dracos. I mean, if I tried it, I might get used to it. I might like it. And then, you know, I'd want to have a, a real game of magic every time. Yeah, unfortunately, my uh, subscription to Moto Premium has expired. And I'm having some trouble... Uh, 
redoing my subscription. Got first strike, can only be blocked by Mold Drifter, so we'll get in there for two. All right, we're gonna get it. We're getting out of here. Let's move on to the next one. Um, we just got unlucky with our draws, and opponent, you know, had their two negates for our masks. What can you do? Um, I'll tell you what we can do. Move on to the next one. Uh, we're definitely in a little bit of trouble here with our her lands and auras. Hopefully, we'll be able to find some uh, some white mana or something nice with commune. But we're gonna start with scout. Yeah, I didn't. Uh, I didn't properly learn how prevalent the uh, the mana weave was among Magic players until I had actually stopped playing Paper Magic. Um, when I go back to Paper Magic, I'm going to be a lot more diligent about making sure my opponent's deck is shuffled properly. All right, so Walker did mulligan to five. Oh. Huh. Okay. So we don't know what they're playing. And Walker knows what we're playing. So we did get the advantage of instant game win, but the opponent has the advantage of sideboarding. We don't know how to sideboard against the opponent here. So I'm just going to resubmit. And uh, we'll find out what Walker's playing for game two. I think I'm going to keep this one. Turn one, Utopia Sprawl, name white, go ledge Walker. Oh, nice draw. In that case, I might. I think I'm going to go green with Sprawl. Okay, so holding up counter magic here. Oh, did I? Okay. Um, I think we just play the Ash Barons here. We could put in an abundant growth onto it. Cartouche. So playing against Affinity, we probably want Free Wind Falcon. Oh, you. Ah, uh, that's so good. Damn it. Now we need to find another creature. Oh, we're in so much trouble. Oh, 
Oh no! Yeah, definitely got some mana. If we find a creature, we can throw some auras onto it. When it uses their blood token from Blood Fountain, discarding Vault of Whispers, finds a Kark Clan Shaman. That card is a jerk. Um, don't think we can actually beat that. Let's uh, move on to game three. So we can bring in these free Wind Falcons. I'm not sure if they run edicts. Um, I'm a guess no, but they could. Our clan shaman. It's the thing. Really doesn't want to sacrifice Car Clan Shaman right now. I could cash in the Armadillo Cloak to force them to sacrifice. They would lose Vault of Whispers and Chromatic Star. And then I would be able to start replaying my creatures. I would only have Rancor, but I think it might be the proper option to make them use the Kark Clan Shaman on my terms. Free Wind Falcon, a Rancor on it. Uh, let's try for an Armadillo Cloak. Nice. Cast down. Wow. You have cast down in the list against Bogles? Well, I guess it was, I mean, specifically for Free Wind Falcon. Makes sense. If you know Free Wind Falcon's coming in, then have an answer for it.
Yeah, got me good. Opponent was ready for Bogles. He went 4 1 with your brew deck. The, um, is it Prowess? Now, big congratulations either way. That is it Prowess list was looking pretty strong when we played. Oh, oh, the black white ephemerate. Sweet. Now, I don't think we're going to be getting 4 1 this league. Pretty sure we're starting out 0 2. I don't think we could even get there with Armadillo Cloak at this point. <laughs> Arms of Hadar. GG's. Good games, Walker. I was hoping for a planes on top, I'll be honest. But that's pretty good. <laughs> oh. All right, so we can two spell or we can one spell. Rancor plus Cartouche uh, is going to be one, two, three, four, five. So that's seven damage. We could Cloak, which would be one, two, three. I mean, so Rancor Cartouche is going to do the most damage, and then that allows us to get a nice Ancestral Mask next turn. Probably is Turbo Fog. And if so, we've run up uh, run up against probably one of our worst matchups. Being able to, you know, your whole plan is to just constantly prevent combat damage. Our whole plan is to present lethal combat damage turn after turn. Ha <laughs> Nostalgia, you have no idea the depths I will plummet to. Yeah, Desert can get rid of our warrior token, oh no. Yeah, you got to do it in the end of combat step. There you go. You... <laughs> it's
It says right on the card, activate only during end of combat step. I had that uh, the other day too. Someone was trying to activate it during the blocker step, and then they tried to activate it during the damage step, and then they just gave up. I mean, can I really play, play around Tangle though? Good point, Niyotagawa. Yeah, I'm going to play the Ledge Walker and then we'll put Mask on Ledge Walker. Yeah, okay. So that's what we'll do from here on. We'll, uh,. Start working on multiple threats, so we only need to attack with one a turn. Oh, they concede. I mean, they still had another moment's peace in the graveyard. Don't know that we really want to change anything here. Yeah, uh, I had a brief foray into Turbo Fog. The clock was my nemesis. I'd actually set up, uh, I'd removed a bunch of my stops that I normally have. So that I wouldn't be constantly given priority and asked if I wanted to do something. I like took out the, the, uh, the stop in the first main phase. Just, you know, like, okay, only ask me if I want to do anything during my second main phase. Or, you know, like, otherwise, during their end step. Uh, good enough. We had a creature early. Oh, nice draw. So yeah, I had taken out this one, all the stops here, just had second main on my side, that was it. Okay, take two, and we'll uh, go get a forest with his Ash Barons. If they want to weather the storm here, they're not going to get too much out of it. Oh, Growth Spiral. Much better play. Kind of funny, I, they actually have more time on their clock than we do. Okay, foretell for two mana. I wonder what that could be. Behold the multiverse. What a surprise. They do potentially have counterspell up, but I don't think they really play counterspell. Okay, here's a weather. They gain one more life than damage I dealt, so weather the storm gain one. Huh. 
Oh, that's wild. Oh, we're going to grab Ethereal Armor. I kind of want to diversify my threats again. Yeah, Donut, that was actually my plan here. Oh, not on damage. Now I'm the one. Why did I, why did we stop on, oh, because of the first strike. It's like, I don't have a stop on damage. Why is it asking me to do stuff? Behold the multiverse. I like this card. Haven't actually gotten a chance to play it, but uh, I think it's a really cool one. Just moments piece, not a tangle. Oh, I've never seen this played before. Uh, four mana instant, draw two cards. You may put a land card from your hand onto the battlefield. Oh, that's really cool. Two extra mana for that extra card. Still. Oh, wow, and they get to hit one of my uh, warriors with the desert if they can figure out how desert works. You're in the right step. You did it. Good job. Opponent's been uh, doing a good job keeping up on their clock here. Still about a minute ahead of me. And another moment's peace. So they have two moments peace in their graveyard currently. Going to be a while before we can swing in for a lethal attack if we ever get a chance. But we're going to keep on trying, obviously. Maybe we can get there one day. Oh, they must have like a tangle or something in hand. Because they're going for a big mill here.
Another moment's peace. I might have been tempted to put some of those moments piece back into the library so that uh, they could be redrawn. But uh, that might have been risky with the amount of cards they currently still have on their deck. Yeah, probably just better off to uh, have three turns guaranteed to survive and draw more cards. Just means that they'll have fewer uh, fogs in the late game. Of course, we're not looking for the late game here. We're just going to mill the opponent out. I mean, the opponent's going to mill us out. It's another 12 cards. We go down to 14. That's not math. 16. Huh. Maybe the first one had uh, resolved or something early. I don't know. Just have more cards in uh, the library than I expected. It's all good. They have no cards left in hand. And a single moment's piece left. So you're going to scry on upkeep here. Uh, one card on top. Moment's Peace. I don't know, I kind of... I don't know, I, I don't play the, um, the Fog deck very much, as we were kind of discussing, but I wonder about playing out that second one. I guess that's better if you're looking to reshuffle your Moment's Peace back in at some point, but if you're trying to play around Grave Hate, like, what if I had, um... Uh, Barry Macabre, I would just be able to pop, pop, take your, both of your moments piece right here. Guess they're not worried about that. Weather the Storm, gain 6. Uh, still able to attack with le for lethal, though. Just got to switch my attacker. Another Ancestral Mask. And another moment's peace. But that is their last moment of peace. They have three of them exiled. I guess there is potentially still one more left in the library. Yeah, I think you're right on that. Frantic inventories and... Uh, what was the other one? AK. Such a great option. So they would have to cast... Oh, needed. they're saying needed an untapped land. I think they had another Stream of Thought. If they could cast Stream of Thought four times, they win.
Okay, well, we find a win. So we're going to be uh, playing out the full league here. I was kind of hoping we'd 0-3 and then we could just uh, maybe try and get a trophy here. But let's play out the full league and see if we can make this a 3-2 the hard way. Uh, this one's got to be a mulligan. This one we can keep. Actually kind of hard on to decide what we want to ditch here. Playing against Tron. Let's play the scout. Are they just going to natty Tron here? I mean, that's what you do when you're playing Tron, right? Armadillo Cloak. All right, let's start with Commune. Try and find a planes here. Don't find a planes, but we do find an abundant growth. Or we could just go get the forest so we can play Ancestral Mask. Ah, this lets us play Cloak as well. Nice. Okay, so they play the expedition map and then they play Bajukabog. Okay, no Tron. But next turn, big mana and Tron. Uh, so what are we going to do here? I think we probably just play Armadillo Cloak. Attacking for three. If we play Ethereal Armor, we got the same damage in, but we could play Commune with the Spirits. Maybe find like a Rancor, get some big damage. But getting a uh, three mana card out of our hand right now means that maybe we can two spell next turn. Ancestral Mass does the same damage as Cloak, but it does more damage later. But it's we're also not using our white mana at that point. I think I'm just going to play the Armadillo Cloak. So any of our auras here, we can only cast one. Any of them gives our creature the same boost in power and toughness. So I just kind of feel like this is the most mana effective spell to be playing this turn. Um, this way we can cast both of these spells if we draw any land. And get in for big damage next turn. Draws a card, okay, uh, cast Chromatic Star, what's next? What's next for our Tron opponent here? Reckoner's Bargain, okay. Got a little bit scared when I saw the black mana, but I wouldn't expect a uh, an Edict in the main board. Another Ethereal Armor. 
Uh, so I'm thinking we'll commune with the spirits and play Ethereal Armor this turn. We could play just Mask, though. Mask would be plus four. Ethereal Armor is plus three. But commune with the spirits can potentially make this a much better turn if we find a Rancor or a Plains. We find a Utopia Sprawl. So what I could do here, get the Utopia Sprawl, um, put it onto the Force with Abundant Growth, name White, and then play Ethereal Armor, Ethereal Armor. Now we attack for 13. <laughs> okay I can gain a little bit of life but uh, not sure you're going to have the time because I have trample and we're about to play a mask So gaining five life, probably not quite enough. Conjurer's Bauble gains another five life, goes up to 15, but they don't know about the Ancestral Mask. So maybe they think this is enough to uh, keep them alive for a turn and even keep the Fengen Marauder on the board. So if I had nothing here, this would actually be pretty, pretty good. Get them an extra turn. Maybe they could stabilize after this. But uh, we have other plans. Take 25. Alright, so we're playing against Tron. Don't know too much about what the Tron deck is going to be doing. Um, I've never played a Tron deck, so I don't have any... Uh, any experience to draw off of here? Don't know if they're going to be running like Edicts or Sweepers or what their answer to, uh, to Hexproof is. I don't think we need Lifelink. Don't think we need Standard Bearer. Don't want gut shot. The question is, are either of these cards going to be effective? I think we might just resubmit just as is, same 60. Yeah, tranquility is a problem, but there's not really much we can do about it. We're not running counter magic. Jeez, been streaming for an hour and 15 minutes and we're only in match four? 
playing slow over here. Ah, that's good enough. Utopia Sprawl call white. And then we can Glade Cover Scout Ethereal Armor. Do I play the Glade Cover Scout first turn in case we draw Forest? Let's see what we draw here. Another Glade Cover Scout. Because I could play Glade Cover Scout. I think if I drew land here, I'd want to play the Scout first. But because I didn't draw land, I think I play Sprawl first. <laughs> we were playing against Heroic quite a bit, actually, yesterday. I say quite a bit. I mean, two matches out of ten. Definitely been... See Ooh, nice draw. Definitely been seeing it a little bit more than uh, previously, though. Let's go with Cartouche first. Well, um, you might be interested, there should be a, uh, a Boros Heroic deck coming out of the, um, out of the downgrades. There's a pretty nice Boro Boros hero. I think it was, what was it, uh, plus one, plus one counter and scry, I think. Oh, crap, Kark Clan? Oh, they only have one artifact currently? Damn. Alright. Should have played Ethereal Armor, I guess. More of the fools for me. All right, let's try and get them to crack it. Oh, they just take the damage. Yeah, we're going to have to bait. Uh, I guess with the cartouche. And then we can play Glade Cover Rancor. Hey, Vitor, see that you have the manas to open a chest. Let's just go ahead and crack that open while uh, we're waiting for the opponent to decide if they want to use Kark Clan Shaman. Okay, what do we get? Five play points. We get Disciple of the Ring, a five mana 3-4 with a ton of abilities. One mana, exile an instant or sorcery card from your graveyard. Choose one. Counter target non-creature spell unless its controller pays two. Disciple of the Ring gets plus one plus one until end of turn. Tap target creature or untap target creature. It's a lot of stuff. And then also Magus of the Arena. A six mana five five that says for three mana, tap it. Tap target creature you control and target creature an opponent control. And a target creature of an opponent's choice they control. Those creatures fight each other. This reminds me of that old land arena that uh, you used to be able to get by um, buying a, uh, a magic fantasy novel. Holy crap, they let this resolve? Uh, that wasn't supposed to happen? Might as well put Rancor on it, I guess. Yeah, Donut. It's unfortunate, but uh, it is the way it is. If we had another white mana, we could have really punished them by playing Ethereal Armor. That would have been hilarious. This resolves, oh, we can just kill the next turn. Ethereal Armor, you're never killing it. Oh, this is kind of risky. Kind of risky.
Ah, they have it. All right. So they got Tron, and they got enough artifacts to kill with Kark Clan. It's going to be pretty hard to recover from this position. But we'll do our best. We got the Rancors back. We'll get to play Glade Cover Scout Ethereal Armor. Oh, another Ethereal Armor draw. Wicked. Okay, so they're going off here. So we're going to set a yield into our until our second main. Hey, thanks for the follow, friend. Play the Scout, play Ethereal Armor, and Rancor. Hey, it's the Fangren Marauder again. This is what they uh, tried to stabilize with last time. And they do have the Conjurer's Bobble, so they're able to go up to 20 life here. Um, looks like we do not have the kill yet. We are going to swing in for a ton of damage, though. Yep, yeah, Conjurer's Bauble is back, thanks to the Tron Eggs list. This is actually a list that has made me consider playing Tron, which kind of makes me feel dirty. That's a lot of damage! Oh, they're going for their combo here. Boundary Inspector, Fangren Marauder, gonna start gaining millions of life. I wonder if they've stabilized. Uh, we haven't seen any edicts yet. <laughs> hey, it's just that, like, I, I've never played Tron before. I've spent a lot of time playing against it as a Jund player. So uh, Tron kind of has this place in my mind where it's the enemy. Wow, they're gaining some life, huh? With the double foundry inspector, their spells are basically free. So they can just continuously like slam down golden eggs, slam down Icker Well Springs, and just keep on playing onto the board here. Yeah, it's funny when I get to play the burn deck and be the good guy against Tron. Oh, that's not going to do it.
we just, you know, reduce the spell's casting cost by two. And, you know, most of our spells cost two, so... Or one. So we just reduce it by the mana value. Now they're free. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. And every once in a while, a new deck comes out that takes advantage of some card that has been available for years and we never really thought that we had a home for it. You know, there's Golem Foundry. So they're going to be able to start making their tokens now. Wow, three Fangrand Marauders. That's brutal. Uh, 11 damage. And we draw another forest. Thanks, Dak. It's just what I needed. Oh, I see that it's turn 70. You only have two lands in play. How about another forest? A little bit awkward because of the mana, but I think we definitely keep this. Opponent is on the mulligan here. About time. Hey, thanks for the luck. Let's get that F6 value. Hey, thanks, Pengu. No Kark Clan, turn two. Love to see it. So let's see here. I think we play Utopia Sprawl in the forest, name green, and then Cartouche. Get some damage in. Next turn we can Armadillo Cloak. Plan 8 is the only plan. Now we got Trample. Also, we gain a little bit of life. Uh, something I've talked about before in previous Bogles videos, Armadillo Cloak has an interesting clause in the sense of gaining life. It is not giving the creature lifelink. It specifically says whenever enchanted creature deals damage, you gain that much life. So that's a trigger that happens after the damage happens. So that means that if your opponent attacks you for lethal, you block with a creature with Armadillo Cloak, you're still going to die because you do not gain that life. Um, until after the damage has been dealt to your life total. Although it does actually give you double lifelink. 
So if we're about to put this armadillo cloak onto the bogle, then we're going to gain twice the life in relation to the damage we dealt. And this is looking like a forced block. Because they need, I think, three. Yeah, three tokens on that. They only have two. I guess they could play one more artifact, get a golem, but I think they still have to block with Fengren. Oh, Fling would be a lot of fun. What was uh, someone recommending earlier? Uh... A spell that just does damage equal to the highest power. Oh, wow. Ancestral Mask. Our cup runneth over. GG. Hey, thanks for the follow, friend. Nice. See, so the trigger went onto the stack. We did not gain the life. Opponent's dead, so that's just the way this works. I think it's something interesting to point out every once in a while. Uh, this is a mulligan. Hey, Toggin, thanks for the luck. Catch you next time. Thanks for dropping in. We'll keep this one. Get rid of... I think we get rid of Abundant Growth. Because Utopia Sprawl is going to name white so we can Ethereal Armor. And we'll hope for a land on top. <laughs> That's why you like Turbo Fog. Only one player's life total matters. Oh, this is the mirror match. This could be the mirror. Okay, Jewel Thief. Good thing they didn't have um, Thermokars there. Oh, yeah. We should have just looked at that. They named Red. Obviously, it's not Bogles. So that was actually a really dangerous play. Uh, yep. Crimson Fleet Commodore. Need to find a land on top here. We do not find it. Could attack with a 4-4 four, four first strike. If they double block, that's bad news. Can't really attack into this. They just double block and I uh, lose my creature. They get to keep the Monarch. That's bad news. But if I get to keep my land for one more turn, I get to put Armadillo Cloak on the Glade Cover Scout. Oh, wow. Rancors. Well, I mean, I do have First Strike. Oh, wow. Hunger of the Howl Pack. Shit. That's really cool. Uh, Ancestral Mask? I got a 15-15 now. How about that?
Oh, shit. <laughs> okay, that attack was terrible. Okay, GG. And we die. So we're bringing Standard Bearer. Um, maybe, maybe Lifelink? Not so sure about it. Definitely want Standard Bearer, though. Uh, see, now that's part of the problem, Donut. I don't remember anything. Uh, what are we taking out for Standard Bearer? <laughs> okay keep this on the basis of standard bearer opponent's deck looks really cool though Instead of topping out your uh, your curve with boarding party and altasaur, you just uh, power up your early creatures with rancor and vines. Seems good. Oh wow! Opponents mulliganing to three here, and they just concede. Uh, yep, yeah, keep this. And opponent is on the mulligan again. So far, just a six, down to five. <laughs> Ooh, cool. Experiment one. So that's why you play this deck. You get to play Experiment 1. That's awesome. Play a sip Slippery Boy. One Slippery Bagel. If I keep this back this turn, it really puts a damper on them. Um, the young wolf would have uh, grown the experiment one. Now they just can't attack. Let me draw ethereal armor. Okay. Experiment half. Nice. Uh, what if they have vines of vastwood here? They could just kill my creature, right? With a 5-5? Five, five? Now you learn not to attack. Shit. Gleeful Sabotage kills two auras.
Don't like that. Flooding out over here. Another critter, just what I need. This is a weird game. Such a weird game. Oh, and now... Ah, they get the good auras. Where's my good auras? Come on, deck. Need to say Theros, please. Theros, please. Where are my good cards? Ugh. Well, that's disappointing. That's what we get for playing Hexproof, though. Uh, good games, opponent. I don't think there's any way we can really be surviving here. They've got two strong trampling creatures. We can throw away our stuff, but... Yeah. Very cool deck, opponent. Love what you put together here, though. Honestly. All right, well, 2-3 uh, with Bogles. We've had uh, some tough matches here, but that's okay. One of the great things about Magic is that even uh, when you're down, you can play more games, find some good luck, hit a new streak. Okay, so this is the deck we were playing today, Hexproof, a.k.a. Bogles. Um, we had some rough luck with it today, but, uh, I mean, that is the nature of the beast. When you're playing a, a Bogles deck, you're going to live or die by the quality of your cards as you're drawing them. So if you end up drawing a bunch of lands or just uh, infinite creatures and no auras, it's not going to be a good time. Um, that being said, this is a deck where you can uh, jam many, many leagues in a day and uh, change your luck. So I do definitely recommend it. It's one of the most played decks in Popper for a reason. It's very strong, difficult to interact with. We just had a uh, bit of rough luck this time, but uh, that doesn't mean we're going to be down on the deck. Um, I uh, I liked that I took out the um, the two mana doggo. Uh, was not missing that at all. I liked having the ledge walker in its place. Uh, Free wind falcon was very interesting. We didn't get too much use out of it, but being a card that we can use to play around uh, Kark Clan Shaman. Very, very important. Of course, you know, our opponent was ready with a cast down. Could you believe it? I sure couldn't. Uh, anyways, um, had a lot of fun with it. Would recommend it. And uh, have a good day.